I selected you for this show, for this award, because I know that given the opportunity and asked to do whatever you want to do, something exciting is going to happen. It felt like a, a rare opportunity to just run with what I, something I wanted to do for a very long time, for decades, mm. collecting this material, thinking about it, looking at it forever, presenting it a bit now and then. But it's nice to have the confidence expressed through a confidence in my practice, both by institution and you as a nominee, be able to have enough backing, financial backing, mm. space to have photographic practice taken as seriously as other art forms. Sometimes it's, it's documentary photography is the master, but allow myself to work with objects, video, um, found objects and photography. So they're not fighting each other and they're telling a different story. So it's like allowing all those things to happen, but keeping it very spare. I wanted very much to produce something that looks like a, an exhibition rather than a sociological treatise or something. Actually, what you've done is incredibly clever because it's incredibly difficult to get that balance right. You know, the photographs have to be, you know, sweet and, you know, just delightful to have a conversation with found objects. Otherwise, one is outbalancing the other, mm. uh, you know, just taking over from the other. And what you've got going is a conversation between people, a conversation between place, and a conversation between histories. And I think those are the things that, that your work does, that's what your work's doing. Yeah, and the medium is photography, and it's, it's been taken seriously as a, as a medium here, even though usually it's always this, the second cousin to moving image. You can't really hold up to it, or representation of something or an object. It always fall, it tends to fall down, but I wanted it to be up there with the objects, tantalizing those little sort of jeweled moments. So that sometimes the photographs actually look like objects. Or they look like little diamonds floating across the sky. Mm -hmm. So it's having photographs working that way other than as documentaries or a por a, something called a portrait. Yeah. They're talking about a number of things and they're talking to each other. And then when people gravitate and move around this space, you know, they're caught in the dialogue and they're caught between the plinths and the different points of view you can get. So. Yes, it's also about how you navigate through that space, what you go and see first, what surprises you as you turn around the corner. There's all those things allow to happen because the institution is backing you up and the institution is supporting me as a practicing artist. It's allowed all, those, uh, all that expertise you have, I suppose, about the history of photography. You know, I, I think of you as a historian of the camera and a his historian of photographs. Um, sort of running alongside, you know, the, the sort of, um, the, the kind of aesthetic um, uh, questions that you ask. And somehow all those, all those photographic histories are coming in as well. You are, you've so much understood what a camera can do, what a camera used to do, what a camera's been used for, and all that comes out in this room. And it's as much about texture and scale and surface you know you've got the unframed work you've got mounted work behind glass you've got objects and then you've got beautiful plinths as well so it's it's cool but you're allowed to operate in that space so the importance of scale is very important from the tiny coin to the you know enlarged pages from a book but they've also got surface and texture to them that's might be reflecting light or it's absorbing light, you know, just how black can you get the black, mm. you know, and how white can you get the plinths. So there's that sort of, very, you know, formalistic dialogue going on between the works as well, which you might pick up as, you know, a member of the audience, or you may just look at, you know, how nice is that bit of greenery in that picture. It's about the form and medium of photography in a number of ways and how it interacts with sculpture and video and objects, yeah. And you mentioned audience there, and I think what you're giving audiences is free reign to roam about the, the space. There isn't an order. You, what, they, what they'll do is they'll find themselves inside, inside your head, but also inside your, your sense of history and inside all sorts of co different conversations. So, of course, there are conversations between pieces of work, but there are, there are different sorts of conversations with, 
who we are as an audience, um, how, we, how we deal with our uh, environment, how we deal with our own histories, in a way that very often being in our exhibition is not. There's a sort of, there's a sort of passive thing that goes on. Do you think you're thinking about audiences in that way, or is it me that obsesses about audiences? We're both thinking about audiences, and I'm always thinking about them, how they're going to uh, continue this dialogue that I've started by placing, by having this exhibition and having particular work. So I've started a conversation, so how they choose to, you know, argue with me or respond or disagree is about how they navigate this space. And as you said, there's no particular route. And you may be interested in, you know, the photographicness of the framed works. Also, when you look at them, you sometimes some of them you get confused about the scale of what you're actually seeing. Is the mm. are the wooden bits of architecture? Are they really big bits of building or small bits? So you can get lost in that. And then there's very formal landscapes so you mm. can enjoy the tonal range mm. and wonder what's the relationship to the rest of the work in it. So mm. there's a number of questions as we go as the audience goes round that I want them to have some bits you have to actually go right up to to really see it and other stuff you have to go back or you can just stay where you are, you know, and turn your head and look around. Some bits jump out at you by the colour and scale and the surface of them and others you have to, yeah, you have to really uh, have a very fine observation of what's in the frame. Can you talk a bit about this, this sort of, the hidden? Uh, well, I guess the hidden and the observable and the unobservable, I guess, is in all of them. There's, yeah. there's things that you recognise that are, you know, the architecture of certain locations. But, but there's also the things that have been lost. You might have a street name that reminds you of what was formerly in that space, but then all you've got left now is the street name and not the building that was there. Yeah. Or you can have the, the embossed pictures, which are, again, a representation of something that, that exists. But you have to go really close up to see it, and if you walk away, it vanishes. So it's both what you can observe, what you imagine is there, if you look into these landscapes. But then as the author of them, I know the story behind the space, or I imagine the story behind that space. So I know why the framing's there, the time of day, why it's black and white, or whether it's colour. What, what's, what I want people to imagine that they can see in those spaces, what I imagine is I want them to make their own story about that space mm -hmm. in relation and in the context of this show rather than it being a single picture on its own with no context. But also in this space, you've got literally the story using text and words and letters and commas and full stops. So that's, that's telling another story, mm -hmm. but the obviousness as a, as a book or that kind of way of communication, it, because the scale's different, because the surface is different, how you interact with it, it it's suddenly become an object now. So both you can read what appears to be a story there, but you're interacting with it as an object, not just a page in a book, and you turn and you go to the next story. You know, you stop and you, there's close observation of this page, close observation of the story and the text, and then what you choose to make of that in relation to the number of large texts there are or you treat them individually, or you look to the what's next to it. So again, it's an invitation to make sense of this work yourself. There's lots of clues. Quite a lot of this experience in this exhibition is about experiencing the visible and the invisible. Sometimes it's the pleasure of observation, mm. pleasure of photography, which mm. in this situation it's been allowed to be a big photograph, it's allowed to be luscious at the same time so it's a beautiful frame so that's always part of it even if you choose not to engage with sets of ideas you could just enjoy the leaves or the color or the landscape that's that's okay with me you want to look at the pictures and that's if I don't have that then we, you know we kind of start to talk you know I'm quite happy to talk about framing and lenses and cameras that's that's the medium I choose to work with and that's constantly changing so I want people to enjoy that aspect of it, particularly people who are involved in photography themselves. Yeah. They will be looking at that. Yeah. But I, I was also wondering whether having made this show without being necessarily specific, whether, there, whether it's, it's encouraged some other kind of ideas to develop. It encouraged a certain boldness that you know, deep down I always thought, you know, I could... I could choose to produce, you know, elegant, spare photographic ex exhibitions as well as the documentary, as well as printed material. Mm. It's nice to have it realised 
on a, on a bigger scale than, I, than I'm used to. So that's what I mean, I'll take forward a certain amount of boldness mm. when the opportunity arises. That's what's good about the award, that you have the opportunity mm. with an institution backing you up and a nominee who, you know, who knows what she's talking about. So that's, as, as an artist, you know, of mature years, that's, that's, that's good support. Yeah, I mean, the bold, the work was always bold. <laughs> Yeah, small-scale bold, because there are lots yes. of different circumstances. So. Yeah, yeah, but it was. I mean, you know, for 35 years or whatever it's been, one has always, all of us, you produce the work, it's there, and we're always going, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, so that was always there. Yeah. But it, it is great to have some air and space yeah. around it. So, no, yeah, it's good to have space yeah. and air and just allow the work to breathe rather than cramming it in in case this is the last opportunity. Oh no, it's the beginning of the beginning of the beginning. Absolutely.